today's episode, we're going to talk about... I know. <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> the I knowers. The I knowers. I used to be an I knower. Mm -hmm. Why do we want to talk about this? Because in a time-space reality like today, where everyone is growing... Yes. And is everyone? Well, supposed to. You know, if you're not growing, you're dying. We hope so. So at least development, I would say, is one of the forefronts of fulfillment. Agreed. So a lot of people are always asking to grow. Yes. Or asking to know, right? <laughs> There's two stages. There's two stages. But what I've been noticing is that a lot of people are not actually receptive to information. Mm -hmm. they're, they ask the questions, they're like assholes. They ask, but they don't want to know. I used to be an asshole. Gary! I'm not going to lie. So you say about the two stages, mm. grow or know. I used to be an I know. Now I'm in grow. Big time. Grow, grow, mm. grow, grow. Mm. But I used to be an I know. Yeah. Always. Maybe it's a millennial thing. No, I, I, I don't, don't think it's a millennial thing. I think it's a human thing. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. But so, yeah, no, like all through the corporate world, that was my thing. I know. I know. And it's not even, like I said to you, it's not even consciously listening. So you could be telling me something and it might actually completely transform the way I do something, mm. but I'm not even listening. I just say, I know. What do you think it stemmed from? Like, I know what it stemmed <laughs> from, but what do you think it stemmed from? The psychologist from? is quizzing me now. Just the inability to listen. It's feeling not good enough. Interesting. So, okay. yeah, if you don't feel good enough when somebody is giving you advice, you go into a defensive mechanism mm -hmm. and therefore you know, you want to show that you know. Yeah. And by doing that, you're going to say, I know, right? I already know that, even if you don't know it. Yeah. Which stops your actual growth because in realistic terms, nobody knows anything because even the information we know today is usually obsolete in a few years. If not a few months. A few exactly. Months. You know, but if we look at it like brain surgery yeah. or um, any information we know about the brain, anything from 10 years ago is already obsolete. We yeah. can't use that anymore. Yeah. But a lot of people have this innate need to prove that they're good enough. So even if somebody comes and has a conversation with them about something they don't know, they'll be like, oh yeah, I heard it in the magazine, in the news. I read this in the magazine. See, that's the one that gets me the most. I heard it in the news. Like, come on now. You're not really getting your information from the news these days. It's not even about the source. It's about them proving that they, they know. know. Yeah. So that's the one, the, the knowers. Or there's also another frustration point that I get, not necessarily that I know, it's the people that if you're telling them something, for example, an experience, like I've gone on a holiday, I've done this, oh, I met this kind of person, they're like, oh yeah, when I went away, I also did this. So there's also that group, right? So what is that group? That group is also a group that feels not good enough and or unimportant. That one is more unimportant. So what they're trying to do is feel important and relatable. So when you go and say, I went on holiday there, they don't actually care about their your holiday. They care about you knowing that they're important enough to have gone to the same thing and experienced yeah. the same thing. So again, it, it stems from insecurity. Most of our behaviors stem from an insecurity, yeah. right? But we just have to realize it. So I have a rule for this, actually. I say when someone's telling a fucking story, ask at least three questions before you relate to the story. Interesting. Three questions. Because, that's, three? because that's a conversation. Yeah. Right? You want to get deep into something? Ask three questions. And this is a very good point. The art of conversation, right? It's kind of tied up a bit. Because everyone is trying to up the other person by telling a, a more significant story, a more important story in their mind. So there's no longer a dialogue. It's now more, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to talk at you, and the other person is going to talk at you back. Mm -hmm. Notice, notice, you'll be like, I was stuck in traffic and, you know, um, in Sheikh Zayed. Oh my God, the other day I was oh, stuck yeah. in traffic on Sheikh Zayed Road. It's always that kind of conversations. They're yeah. not conversations anymore. Yeah. Statements, and right? They're just talking at each other. Yeah. Because we're missing one component is interest. Yeah. You know, and when you sit there and you ask the other person a question, you're showing interest. 
and that feels that's what builds the connection mm -hmm. and that's just been lost yeah sad yeah well it depends right because you think about our friendship circle it's probably very different in that way right of course because we are in a sense of growing now yeah a stage of growing now <clears throat> yeah and we care about each other and we ask each other questions but notice yourself when you're not around yeah, your yeah. peer group when you're around different sets of people yeah i mean I'm one of those social butterflies. I have lots of different groups, yes. right? And there's a group that I know that I can talk about my growth. There's a group that I can talk about this and that and none of that. And sometimes I'm like, I'm not even going to bring up this topic, this group, because it's just going to fall flat on its ass. And notice when you switch off as well, because yeah. there is moments where you would switch off and not be part of the yeah. conversation, but you're sitting there. So for me, it would be like, why are you even sitting there if you don't want to even enjoy the conversation? Mm -hmm. Because you're, you're already detached. Yeah. You've detached mentally. And emotionally. Yeah. Why are you even sitting there physically? Yeah, it's true. Right? But it was interesting. I was with a friend last night and we started talking. I don't know how it even came up. But she started saying, because she has a young son, and she was like, oh, yeah. Like, I've started thinking about, like, all the ways in which I was conditioned as a child and, like, the way in which I don't want my son to be conditioned. And I'm like, oh, my God, I didn't know you were, like, into this stuff. And <laughs> I know it sounds weird to say that. But sometimes you don't expect friends to have that knowledge yeah. the same as you. Because you never asked, you just assume. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. So it's also the onus is on you as well, mm. right? Do you really know that person very well? Because and that's why asking three questions will get you to know and ask them with sincerity. You know, so when someone tells me, well, I went to the fresh one, how was the food? How was, you know, the way? Service, yeah. What did you enjoy most about it? Will you go back? So now I'm asking, and they're gonna share, you know, they're gonna genuinely want to know about them, mm -hmm. right? A lot of people want to genuinely know about themselves. <laughs> Hello, narcissists, if you're happy. It's not even a narcissist behavior, it's yeah. just how we've been conditioned because from being a child, when you spoke, your parents never listened to you. They told you their experience in life. Mm -hmm. So you would say, mom, I went to school and this, this, this happened. Either you get an advice immediately, and this, or they tell you, well, when I was your age, this, and was I, bad, bad. this is what yeah. happened. So this behavior has con conditioned generations and generations to just talk at each other, mm -hmm. and we lose that intimacy. Yeah, because I don't know about you know when you leave a really good conversation, you feel such an over like overwhelming feeling of gratitude, like wow, these people get me, I get them, I love the conversations that we have, and it's such a different feeling than just the general chit-chat. 100%. One of the main things that I do when I'm in a group of people that I don't know is I ask a million questions about them, and I just do it now naturally. And it's the psychologist within me, obviously, because I'm used to asking people questions and listening to them, but I really sit there and I ask, 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 and I build these relationships as sustain through time mm -hmm. because in that moment I made them feel the most important person in the mm -hmm. room and they probably know nothing about me but that's okay with me right that, that was okay for me yeah. because I now know everything about them I I built rapport at that point and if I meet them again I will remember them and they will remember me yeah I was gonna say you're very good at that like I've been yeah. with you when you've done this with other people as well and like you'll ask a lot of questions, but it doesn't feel like it's an interview, you know? No, yeah, it's not an integration. It's actual, this is what I said, interest. Like, I want to know you. And yeah. people are so willing to talk about themselves. Have you ever met a person and, and be like, tell me about yourself and they in a social setting and they'll be like, no, I'm not. People are like, so what do you do? Oh, I, you know, they'll yeah, yeah, tell yeah. you everything. Because people are naturally humans of social. of social nature, right? It's like turning on a tap. As soon as you turn it on, to shut it off sometimes 100 percent. and just another note on the types that we wanted to talk about there was the i knowers and then yes. there's the butters the but the butters yeah hey butters the butts yeah but but, but this but this i feel like you can lose and like a whole demographic of people um that you are close to by just using the word but so even if you're with a group of friends and you're like um, how was your day? What did you want to do? Blah, blah, blah. And the person comes back with, well, this was amazing, but, and I'll be like, oh, that's negative Nancy there. Or you give somebody an advice, they'll be like, I hear you, but, but. at that point, but is such yeah. a strong word psychologically that it actually switches off your brain from listening. 
So it's just like a turn off method. And anything, because the first thing is every, you didn't hear anything after but, mm -hmm. right? They said but, and you I'm heard saying, nothing you after off. because but. you're finding a way to respond mm -hmm. to that now. Because yeah. now you think it's an argument. And it's all psychological because it's not even an argument, but your mind thinks it's in debate mode. So witness a time I love a debate. where you were having a conversation with somebody and somebody said, but you're automatically trying to find a way to prove their but wrong. Yeah. Is there a healthy alternative to but? Now there's the hack. Okay. Okay. That 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 teach ends, us the hack. Teach the us hack, hack is is a little bit unfair. It's a it's a little bit. No, we're, we're here for the hack. Come on, you are the mind <laughs> hacker. If you're gonna teach us the hack, we want to know. It's an unfair advantage because you if you say and oh. instead of but and say it's something completely random that has nothing to do with whatever you know like so for example That's interesting. Okay, give us an example. Let's 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 uh, let's play. So, give me a topic like women's rights, right? So imagine you're anti-women's rights and I'm pro-women's rights. Of course, I'm going to be the pro-women's rights okay. guy. Obviously, I'll be the anti. I am not. Just <laughs> <for> <laughs> They've they listened to this uh, podcast. They know. So if I came and I said, like, women deserve equal rights to men. You know, that's a fact. But, you, you know, if you came and said, yeah, but women, whatever you said after it. Now, you, imagine you said, yeah, but women don't want equal rights, mm -hmm. all right? Or, well, yeah, women have equal, equal rights. No, you say, but women, you're the opposer, so you say, yeah, but women. I can't even yeah, pretend to wrote that. But you say, but women don't want equal rights, okay. right? Now, I'm going to argue that, okay? But if you just change the but and say, yeah, I agree, and women, however, don't want equal rights, I'm not, now I have to think about that. Yeah. It's not as reactive yeah. as but. Yeah. Because but tells me it's there's true. an argument. But if you just said and, mm -hmm. and you still said your point of view, even though it's ridiculous, my mind is not triggered. Yeah. So even, I'm even hearing you say it, my mind's like going, oh, I'm kind of. That's why it's a now. hack, because the mind doesn't really understand it. So if you ever want to debate with your parents, for example, and we all want to do that, don't say but. Let them say their point and then say, and, and say your point that could be the absolute opposite of it. Yeah. And it will work because they're, they will now think you're aligned. And that's a hack to the mind because the mind sometimes is very slow in processing and it hasn't been used to processing and only but. So but gets a reaction and doesn't get a reaction. So that's how you trick the mind. I really like this hack a lot. Like I feel you could have a lot of fun with this. This is like in the art of negotiation. When okay. I negotiate, I always say and, and it will be absolutely ridiculous what I would say after the end, but I always get um, the end. Another, maybe we should do an episode on the art of negotiation. Yes. Another thing I always say is, isn't it fair? So I'm telling the person that what about I'm about to say is fair. Yeah. And naturally, human beings will be like, yes, they want to they wanna naturally agree, right? Unless yeah. it's something within them that's telling them, no, this is completely wrong. Yeah. So you, and you want to be fair. Yeah. So if I just start, wouldn't it fair that the agreement states, well, yeah, yes. that would be fair? Yeah. Because you never want to be unfair. Yeah. So Unless you're a sicko. Yeah. Well, yeah. But even the sicko's mind is conditioned to be fair. Okay. Right? So in we are, mind. We now, it doesn't mean they will naturally, you know, uh, agree. But for that moment, they will be caught in it because okay. the, the mind is conditioned that justice and fair is good and win-win. And Everybody thinks that's the win-win situation. Yes. So we'll do a whole episode on I the like, art, like art of negotiation. But it's good, these little hats. And the thing is, I'm sure there will be a lot of people listening and watching that probably think, yeah, I do use I know or I do use but. And you're probably even doing it without even realizing it. So this is your challenge for this week. What you need to do is pay attention to the words you say. Boom, shakalaka. Woo!